Hey y'all, welcome to the farm. I've been working on rendering beeswax and I wanted to share my process with you guys. Whenever we do our honey harvest, we always end up with a lot of beeswax. And I've been saving it for like the past three years. I've just been collecting it and saving it. So what I've been doing is just whenever we get this beeswax, I take it and I clean it and I put it up in gallon sized bags and I've just been putting it in the freezer. I've got a pretty good collection of beeswax now, so I wanted to get it all rendered nice and clean and ready to turn into a product. So my goal is, first of all, to make some hand healing salve for gardener's hands. And I think I'm gonna try to make some candles and some lip balm. So that's, that's kind of something I wanna play around with and learn how to do. So I've been working this past week on getting all of my wax rendered and turning it into nice, clean, beeswax that I can use to make these products. So my first step is to clean the wax. As soon as we harvest the honey and we collect the wax, I always go through and clean the wax really good before I've put it up. So I'm gonna show you a clip right now of me cleaning the wax back in May when we harvested honey. And the way I do it is I've got these two five gallon buckets and this one Here's the wax. So I'm using a five gallon bucket paint strainer and we put all the wax in that. And then this bucket has holes in it. So I put it in here like this, put this over so it doesn't fold up in there. And then I put this bucket inside this bucket and fill it up with water and let it just sit and soak overnight. And then I drain it off. I do that for like, I don't know, four or five times until I feel like the, the water's pretty clean. I'm just trying to get all the honey and stuff off of the wax. So I've been doing that process and now, last night I come out and drained all the water off of it and let it just sit out here and drain. So this big bag of wax is ready. When the wax is really clean, it's almost like little potato flakes. And you really do not want to get this in your sink or in your um, plumbing pipes. That could cause a disaster. Three gallon sized full bags of beeswax. After the wax is clean, you can either store it, put it up in the freezer. I wouldn't just leave it out in a cupboard or a cabinet or pantry or whatever because it tends to have a lot of moisture still in there and it molds. So throw it in the freezer. It'll store well in the freezer for a long time and then you can just pull it out when you've got a big enough batch to just do it all, to do all the rendering at once because it is super messy and very time consuming. So once you get it cleaned, you can either store it or you can go ahead and render it right then if you want to. So that brings us to the next step, which is rendering the beeswax. Rendering the beeswax is the purification process. So this is where you melt the beeswax and separate the good clean beeswax from all of the different things that the bees 
put into that wax inside their hive, like pollen, propolis, uh, any dead larvae that was left in there when you, when you harvested the honey, um, bee parts. So different things like that. It's just melting the wax and separating, separating out all of those things to where you end up with a good, clean beeswax. There's multiple different ways to render beeswax. I've watched tons of YouTube videos. I went to classes on it at different beekeeping seminars, and I've read different ideas in different books about how to do it. So everybody's got a different way to do it. I'm just gonna show you guys today the simple way that I found to do it without going out and buying a whole bunch of expensive equipment. I'm just taking what I already have in my kitchen and I'm using those materials instead of going out and spending a whole bunch of money to do this process. So in rendering the beeswax, it's about a three-step process that, that you have to do to get the wax really, really clean. What I did is I saved this old crock pot. I got a new crock pot a couple of years ago and I saved this and I've had it put up in storage knowing I was gonna use this to melt my beeswax in. So it's just an old crock pot and mine has settings on it of like four hours, six hours, eight hours, 10 hours being the lowest setting. Now the ideal thing would be to have something that had temperatures on it because you really want to melt this at a really low temperature so you don't like scorch the wax. And um, 10 hours, I don't really know what that temperature is but it's my lowest setting on here, so I've just went with it, but I've just been keeping a really close eye on my wax and stirring it and making sure it's not getting burnt. And as soon as it's all melted, then I move on to my next step. Um, but if you had something, a slow cooker or crock pot or whatever, and it had a temperature on it, you would want to do it about like at 150. But like I said, I'm using what I've got, so I've got this old crock pot. I've got an old bucket, and this is like my gunk bucket. So this is where all the gunk goes when I strain it off is in this bucket. I've got a glass measure cup, and anything that you use for this process, it needs to just be designating for melting wax because you're never going to be able to use this for anything else. I've got this cheap strainer here that I just got at Walmart. I got like a whole set of them for, I don't know, four or five bucks, I think. So it's just a, a cheap strainer. And I've got an old plastic spoon that I was willing to sacrifice for this. And I've got a little sharp knife that I'm willing to sacrifice for this. So when I'm done with all this, I'll clean it the best I can and I'll just put it up and store it. And this will be what I use every time I render wax. And that's it. That's all I'm using here for this first step of the rendering process. Okay, so the first step to this process, I've got my crock pot here. I've got my beeswax. This is wax. I've already done half of this bag. This crock pot holds about one and a half bags. One and a half of my gallon sized Ziplocs. So I've already used half of this bag. But this is my wax that I cleaned. This was from this year. So this was from May. But this wax right here was really clean wax. The only thing in these frames was just honey just the beeswax and honey. There was no propolis pollen or anything in those frames. So when I clean this wax, it's just getting the honey off and it come out super clean. And I try to keep my waxes separate. So like the wax that was really clean and all that was in it was honey. Uh, I've tried to keep it separate from the wax that had the, the propolis and pollen and stuff in it. And that way I can have the different colors. Now here's some wax also from May 2020. So I just fill up my crock pot, smooth it out. Now this makes a tremendous mess. Like it makes, I've got parchment paper all laid out here and I really wish that I had this set up somewhere like in an outbuilding or outside or something, but I did it in here and it is a mess. And you definitely don't want to let this get this wax get in your sink or in your plumbing. So I'm gonna have a mess to clean up when we're done. But my crock pot's full of wax. Now I'm gonna fill my measure cup up and I'm gonna put water in here just until the water is completely covering the wax. Water 
is right at the top of the wax here. When all of this wax gets melted, all of the gunk stuff floats to the top. And you can just, and we're just gonna take this stringer and we're gonna skim it off and dump it in our gunk bucket. And then we're gonna let this sit. We're gonna turn off the crock pot and we're gonna let this sit overnight, really. It has to sit overnight. That's what I'm saying. This is a long process. After this sits, it's gonna get hard. You're gonna end up with a layer of wax like this tall. All the wax rises to the top and hardens. And then the bottom underneath the wax will be the water and it'll be full of all the little tiny small particles of gunk and impurities will sink to the bottom of the water and all the wax will be at the top and get hard. That's why you wanna use the water in here because it helps with separating the impurities from the wax. So we've got our wax and our water in here. I'm gonna put my lid on. I'm gonna plug it up. And I'm gonna put my setting on the lowest one I've got. In about two hours, I'm gonna come back and check it and stir it and keep it off the edges and um, just check on it. It's been about three hours and most of it's melted. Just got this little bit left here to melt. Okay, all the wax is melted. So now I'm gonna take this strainer and at the top of it is all the gunk, and I'm gonna strain it off. Okay, I've got most of everything skimmed off the top. So all that's left in here is just that little fine, fine stuff. And all of that will sink to the bottom of the water and the wax will all rise to the top. And then as it hardens, cools off and gets hard, then our wax will be ready. So I'm gonna unplug it and put my lid back on here and then we'll just let it sit all night and then in the morning our wax will be ready okay it's the next morning and our wax is ready we got a solid piece of pretty wax now the next step is to scrape this off. See all the stuff that collected on the bottom of this wax? We're going to scrape off as much as we can. Try to get it as clean as we can get it. Just scrape that off. Now we move on to the next step of rendering the wax. This is my box of wax that I've been working on. This is all through this first step. Look at all this wax I've got. Look at the different colors. Here's the darker stuff. So now is the next process. We gotta melt this down again and then filter it and then pour it up into a mold. Okay, now it's time to move on to the next step, which is filtering the wax. Okay, now I have a second crock pot. And this is just an old crock pot that I've been hanging on to. 
and I got a new strainer because the other one that I was using has a lot of that gunk like stuck on it. So I just went ahead and got a new clean strainer to do this process. And I've got a turkey baster and I've got some Pam cooking spray and then just my same knife I was using and paper towels. That's gonna be our filter. I'm gonna be using this Pam cooking spray to spray my beeswax molds. Now these are molds that I bought off of Amazon. They're not the cheapest ones. These are probably about, I would say mid-grade and they were $15 a piece on Amazon. Now the only thing I wish, I wish I had more of these. It would make this process go so much faster because I have to wait and let these set up and harden before I can uh, put, put more wax in there. So it just is taking me longer. So we've got our beeswax molds, our Pam cooking spray, our strainer, a knife, a turkey baster. That is a block of our beeswax that we did the first process where we um, melted the wax and separated out the impurities. And we've got a second crock pot and we're gonna need our first crock pot again. The first step of this filtering process is to get a block of your wax and put it in our first crock pot that we were using. And it's really better if you can break, them, break it up. It melts faster, but this one was one of my thickest ones and I couldn't break it up. So I'm just gonna put it in here like that. It'll melt and plug it up and put it back on my low setting again. And we're gonna let this melt down completely and then I'll show you how we filter it. Now this time we're not putting water in the crock pot because we don't need it to separate and the impurities come to the bottom with the water and harden at the top like we did the first time. This time we're just putting a whole block of wax in the crock pot on a low setting and we're gonna let it completely melt. And then we're gonna do the next step using this crock pot to filter the wax. And then we have really clean wax. Okay, all our wax is melted in here. So now we're gonna, here's our second crock pot. And I'm gonna put this strainer on here. Put your paper towel on it. That's your filter. And then I just pour it over into my paper towel and my strainer and you don't do a whole lot at one time because it will start hardening before it actually filters through. So you just do a little at a time and let it sift through. And you can see right here the, the debris that was left from when we first did it is just catching in this filter. So we're gonna end up with super clean wax. Now the next thing that we're gonna do, I've got my molds here, my beeswax molds and my cooking spray. Now you can buy mold spray. It's, it's a, a spray that you spray the molds for like candles and for these things and, and stuff like that using this cooking spray. Plus it's what I have without having to spend more money. And I just spray that in there. And then I take a paper towel and kind of smooth it out. Cause I figured out if you don't smooth it out, the top of your wax bar has little dimples in it instead of being nice and smooth. So I just smooth it out a little bit. And then you can see this wax in here. See how clean that wax is? Now I'm just gonna take this. I got my turkey baster here. And here's the secret to this thing. Don't let the hot wax get up into the squeezy part because then it hardens up in there and then it's really hard to get all that wax out of there. And I just fill my molds up. The reason I chose these 
beeswax molds, these ones, is because it's one ounce. Each bar is one ounce of beeswax. And most of the recipes that I found to make the candles and the lip balm and all the different things that I want to make, it uh, portions out the ingredients by ounces for the beeswax that you need. So this is going to make it really easy. All right, so once you got these full, I'm going to let it just sit here until the top part of it hardens a little bit and then I'm gonna put it in the freezer so it'll speed up the process. Now I'm gonna go back and filter some more of this wax. We got a lot going on in the kitchen here. I'm working on all this beeswax. And I went, uh, I got to go bow hunting this weekend and I finally got me one, uh, got a nice doe uh, with my bow and arrow and um, making me some jerky meat. This is gonna be good, but you can see this right here, fresh venison. I've got some more sauce that's been marinating with some pepper, and I'm gonna put some more pepper on it, put a little honey on it from Just Dig It Farms, you know, our good honey. This is gonna be awesome right here, but um, very healthy for you. And um, gonna send some to my son Chance out in Utah and our other son Kenneth in Texas and uh, see how they like it. If there's any left after Gene and Chase get through with it. <laughs> now you see how it's kind of hardened on the top a little bit. Now I'm going to stick these in the freezer and speed up the process. And it usually takes about 10 minutes after I stick them in the freezer and then they're ready. And one thing I failed to mention is this second crock pot, you're gonna wanna have it on low. Um, when your wax over here gets about half melted, go ahead and turn this on so it can be heated up so that when you pour the wax over into it and filter it, then it's hot enough that it keeps it liquefied instead of turning to solid again. Okay, now I just took these out of the freezer and I'm just going to dump them out. I tried doing it without spraying it with Pam and it didn't work well at all. They stuck. So when you spray it, they just pop right out of there. And now what I'm doing is I'm just taking this butter knife and just kind of cleaning the edge off of them. beautiful clean one ounce bar of beeswax. So I ended up with about three different colors and this this wax here was nothing but honey. Honey was the only thing that was in this wax. These two had other things in the wax. The color of the wax, a lot like the honey, depends on what pollen what they foraged on to determine the pollen colors. So I think that's very cool that we got these three colors. And that is all the wax that I have put up. And these are all one ounce bars, all clean and ready to use to make something cool with. Here's a quick tip for y'all. If you get wax on your countertops, which more than likely you will because this is a very messy job, then just take your fingernail and scrape the wax up, then get a paper towel and just put a drop or two of lemon essential oil on your paper towel and then just wipe that area up and it'll polish it right up and take the wax, the little wax film that it makes, it'll take that off, right off. This lemon essential oil is the best thing and easiest thing that I've found to do that. It also will remove like glue, like when you have glue um, from the sticky label on a wine bottle or anything like that, a drop of lemon essential oil and a pepper towel will take that right off easily too. So now that we have 100% all natural beeswax straight from our beehives, 
all cleaned and rendered and and processed and turned into little one ounce bee bar, beeswax bars. It's ready to make a product with it. And there are so many different things that you can do with beeswax. And I'm super excited to um, make that a winter project and try to create the lip balm and the hand salve and candles and I don't know, whatever I can come up with. So y'all look forward to that. I'll be sharing videos with you guys on whatever I make with the beeswax. Thank you so much for walking through this process with me on cleaning and rendering the beeswax. Y'all have a blessed day and I'll catch you on the next video.